Hey everybody, Brandon Villarola with The Register here, and I'm here today with Roseanne Kincaid-Smith, Chief Operating Officer at German high-performance computing firm Northern Data Group, to talk about news this week that Google is considering putting some of its AI search features behind a paywall, and whether that's the best move for the company to make. Roseanne, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Brandon. Great to be here. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, Google's well positioned to to bring some new AI innovations to market, despite some of those early struggles that they've had with Gemini. But you didn't sound so sure about whether putting, you know, search related AI features behind a paywall was the best way forward. Can you explain your thinking a bit on that? Yeah. And you can actually, I mean, there, there are two angles to to putting paywalls up around and the technology that AI will bring in, particularly in the search engine results. I mean, my my own view um, on the democratization of access and also the ethos that is uh, drives our business is around allowing access to to the transformative technology that AI will bring, and that includes mm -hmm. in search results. And so, putting up a paywall to actually provide access to that premium information, which is ultimately what we want AI to deliver to actually drive societal advancement doesn't sit well with my own personal ethos and, and certainly the ethos of our business. Mm -hmm. However, I can also see the other side of that coin to say, okay, limiting that access also means moderating the content, making sure that there are some ethical considerations around what that content can look like. And therefore there is a commercial aspect to that. So I can certainly see both sides of the coin, but in terms of digital equity and the future of what AI can bring, I just wonder where they're actually charging for that limits the opportunity that it brings. Right. So now I know, you know, OpenAI, a lot of all these other companies, right, they put their newest models and their newest stuff. And obviously this isn't search related per se. I mean, some of them can't even reach out to the yeah. internet, right? But they put this stuff behind paywalls too. You know, you can do some basic AI search or AI use of some of these products without a subscription, but they're putting those behind a paywall too. So why is that, why is this different for Google? I think because of how expansive Google is. I mean, Google, and I have a, a large amount of respect for what Google have delivered to the tech ecosystem to date. Um, and I think that they're in a bit of an interesting place at the moment. And, and you reference yourself, like the challenges they've had with Gemini. They certainly view the adoption of AI as critical to their business model. And you can see the advancements that they are trying to make. But because Google is such a widely used search engine, it feels unnatural to have part of that to be paid just because of the impact that they have. Yeah, no, I completely understand. I mean, it is it is definitely a whole kind of other other animal, right? It, yeah, you know, exactly. Google does I mean, have like way more reach. AI yeah. and chat GPT, I mean, these are, I mean, in a way, there's actually a bit of a novelty around chat GPT, right? I mean, it's amazing technology. It's got such, a, it's got such incredible potential. But it's, it is a bit of a novelty. Like you're buying a service in a way that, Google is really supposed to be something that is open and available to everybody. Right. Now, have you, uh, have you had a chance to try the search generative experience or SGE, I think as Google's calling it? SGE is it's called, yeah. Um, I actually haven't. Um, however, I do use um, a, a very similar product quite a lot and it's called Perplexity. Mm -hmm. um, there is about, I would say, probably a 90% overlap in terms of the results that you get from both of them. And I think if you are looking at sort of SEO, complexity is going to give you a lot of what Google does and, and you'll be able to track on both of those search engines. Um, but I've just found that that is a slightly smarter tech and a little bit more evolved than what SGE is. And so I favor that one over, over using SGE. That's understandable. I've used SGE a bit, and I haven't been I haven't been super impressed, honestly. It was, uh, you know, it, it it's really evolving, what it seems to do. It? It's still learning. Yeah, exactly. It's still learning. It's also uh, I wrote a story recently that you know basically uh, there's been a lot of SEO spam on Google, obviously, right over the years. People have figured out how to game the algorithms. Yeah. Every time Google changes it, someone figures out how to how to you know maximize their reach maybe even without doing decent work, right? There's been a, an uptick in uh, in malicious links, right? Surfacing on the top of Google SERPs. And uh, apparently uh, SGE has been picking some of those up. And so when people are searching for some innocuous things, right? Like, uh, um, you know, I want to I wanna adopt a boxer in Boston, right? You know, uh, they're, they're getting links to fake, you know, uh, fake Craigslist pages, fake yeah. pages that are actually links to malicious content. I mean... Do you think Google, you know, it, it, Google's AI is ingesting this, right, and spinning it back out because it's a top SEO page, right? Is Google going to be able to to overcome this, you think, without putting these kinds of things behind a paywall, like you said, to moderate? 
I mean, interestingly, one of the big topics of discussion at the moment is around ethics in AI, right? And actually data governance. If anybody is in a position to manage that effectively, it is companies like Google. Mm -hmm. And so that moderation of what can be done there, I mean, and, and actually just picking up on your point around a lot of the content that we see already from Google searches and searches on Yahoo and Bing are moderated, right? Now, mm -hmm. the introduction of AI and the control of AI and the measurement and management of AI is something that we haven't gotten across as quickly as learning to moderate content and search results already. But we will have to focus on that as an industry and for companies like Google and the larger tech giants, there is certainly a huge amount of responsibility to ensure that there is ethical management. Now, again, things like SEOs um, and people ma managing and monitoring that and optimizing for themselves. That is a known algorithm, right? And that could be easily managed by AI. And then if you have some ethical roles that are used to actually drive that moderation and make sure that that malicious content is filtered out, I think Google's in an amazing position to help do that and can help. Gemini could actually easily help with a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think they should be doing that and they don't need to put up a paywall to do that. It should be part of the ethical operations and implementation of AI. Right. So basically, this is something that they can do without needing to, you know, raise yeah, more would... funds beyond a paywall. Yeah. I think, and, and I mean, this comes back to the sort of, again, there's a lot of discussion around digital equity, and this goes back to the points around sustainability and democratization of access to all of this technology. For all of us in this, in, in this space, and that includes the, the Googles of the world, have a direct responsibility to ensure that that is part and parcel of the package and the service that they are offering the, the public, not something that needs to be paid for. Otherwise, I think we're crossing over a little bit of a line and we're not holding ourselves to account as a tech ecosystem to make sure that we're getting the best out of AI. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that actually brings me to uh, another question about Right, sort of the garbage in, garbage out idea. I don't know if you're familiar with Cory Doctorow and the term yeah. initiativeification of the internet, right? He's mentioned <laughs> this before, right? So basically, you know, it's, it's you know, AIs are being trained on on AI-generated garbage, right? So the things they're giving us are, are increasingly kind of useless, right? That chat GPT, even some of the other earlier versions were better than what we have now. I mean, do, do you think, is this something you see happening? And, and I mean... Is it is it going to come down to to implementing the sort of ethical frameworks that you're talking about to ensure that AI doesn't get worse? I think that's absolutely right. Um, and actually, that should, and I think going back to what I was saying, the sort of building on building on the the previous conversation that we were having, ethics and AI has got to be a priority. Implementing implementing the infrastructure in a sustainable way, implementing the data sets in a sustainable way, in an ethical way, and then governing that data effectively and making sure that you have the right people governing that data too is going to be of paramount importance. Because I think your point, right? I mean, garbage in, garbage out. I mean, we all know like data, data management is absolutely key to the credibility of the ongoing use of AI. Mm -hmm. And so being able to do that effectively has got to, again, be a priority. And it's just very much linked back to the ethics and the use of that and i mean just just more broadly and if i ideate on on the use of of ai and because we work with it so closely it'll be the front of mind for me all the time but i often think we haven't really gotten to the core of what we want ai to do for us and how we want it to improve our lives and so the result is this garbage in garbage out because right there's so much of it out there that it's easy for ai to scoop that up but if we were a little bit more purposeful and the Googles of the world, the open AIs of the world, and even for us in the data, right, making sure that we are sustainable and ethical in the way that we implement that will mean that the actual quality of information and the data sets are managed in the right way and we get the best out of that. But we've actually got to be purposeful about that and decide to do that in the right way. And as I said, making sure that that is built into the service offering, making sure that it's just part and parcel of what we do every day. It's got to be the next step. Well, I sure hope you're right. And these companies, these and big and small, right, choose to yeah. take this approach because I think it's very important to prevent, you know, the internet uh, and our, our access to valuable data from, from getting worse. Absolutely. Yeah. And we do want that, right? I mean, AI oh, yeah. is going to be transformative technology. And so we've got to, we've got to make sure that it delivers on the promise. Yeah, I sure, I sure hope you're right. Uh, Roseanne, thanks so much for joining me. You can read more about this and other AI-related stories at the Register.
Thanks, Brendan.